Kia ora, and welcome to the CoreLogic Property Market Update for July 2021. There are tentative signs of change in the property market, so the key question to us now is whether we're at a turning point or simply witnessing a change in momentum. Firstly, we should acknowledge the truly exceptional growth in property values and activity over the past year. New Zealand property values increased by an astonishing 22.8% in the 12 months of June 2021, pushing the average national property value past $900,000 for the first time. But the nationwide monthly rate of growth has slowed for two months in a row now, increasing by 1.8% in June, tapering from a recent high of 3.1% in April. 1.8% growth is not a slow rate in itself, but when we delve into the regional detail, the easing of momentum becomes clearer. 12 of Aotearoa's 18 largest markets experienced a slowdown in growth, with a further three cities recording minor drops in value over June. Gisborne values dropped by minus 0.9% over the month, and while the longer term context of 35.8% growth in the last 12 months is important, the change in direction feels significant, especially the timing of it. We've been talking about a slowing of the market for a while, but expected it to be more gradual than what Gisborne has shown. We also don't want to get too carried away with the short term read on the market, but it's likely the tightened loan to value limits, alongside increased uncertainty due to government policy changes, are starting to impact buyer behaviour. New Plymouth down 0.3% and Napier effectively sideways at minus 0.1%, with the other two cities to drop into negative territory. From our main centres, Christchurch and Auckland's rate of growth held steady at 3.0% and 1.5% respectively while 2.3% and 1.9% growth respectively in Wellington and Hamilton remain strong figures, albeit lower than their growth rates in May, which both exceeded 3%. Sales activity has continued to hold up, with over 8,500 sales last month, making it the strongest June since 2016. However, there are regional differences showing out in this data too. Sales volumes in June for Dunedin were down 30% year on year, and with listings not in such shortage in the university city, Signs of further easing of momentum are clear. The listing situation elsewhere looks a lot tighter. The total number of properties available for sale in Tauranga is down almost 60% compared to 2019. This is a stark difference to Dunedin, where there are actually 3% more properties available for sale today than two years ago. This isn't due to an unusual lift in new listings coming to market, which will remain seasonally normal, but is simply a reflection of reduced sales activity, allowing supply to replenish. So, we still haven't seen any evidence of investors divesting from the market. However, we have seen a reduction in demand and activity from them. Mortgaged investors' share of purchases in June was 24.2%, the lowest since June last year, and well down on the 28.8% share secured in March this year. The downward trend is very similar to that witnessed the last time investors required a 40% deposit in October 2016. So it's likely the loan to value limits are the key driver of this change. However, the uncertainty surrounding the government's interest deductibility changes will have also weighed on investors' minds. Meanwhile, first home buyers are offsetting the investor decline, with their share of June sales at 25.1%, up from 21.1% in March 2021. The loss of momentum and the pace of capital gains could begin to factor into investor expectations. They're already accepting a lower yield on their investment due to higher purchase prices, increased costs, and stretched rents. Reduced capital growth will add yet another dent to their potential profitability, which will likely result in investor activity continuing to diminish. Looking ahead, and the prospect of higher interest rates is getting closer and closer every day. In their latest monetary policy review, the Reserve Bank Committee held the official cash rate, or OCR, at 0.25%, but agreed to reduce the current stimulatory level of monetary settings. They'll do so by halting additional asset purchases under the Large Scale Asset Purchase Program by 23rd of July 2021. This is a reflection that our economy continues to perform surprisingly well and doesn't require the same amount of support as it previously did. The next likely tool to be adjusted will be the OCR. And while the Reserve Bank acknowledged near-term inflationary concerns, which could otherwise contribute to a lift in the OCR, the bank remained firm on the factors causing this inflation being one-off in nature or temporary. This will likely temper expectations of the OCR lifting before the current expected November timeline. There are other considerations for lifting the OCR, especially too soon, 
including the impact on our exchange rate and the flow on to dampening exports. So calls of an August increase are probably premature. Of course, what seems sensible today can quickly change, either with new data coming to light or through COVID entering our community. Just look over the digital Australia. So make sure you subscribe to the New Zealand Property Market Podcast and regularly check the news tab at corelogic.co.nz to stay on top of all the developments concerning our property market. Mā te wa.